Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Scuba Science. The ocean and outer space could seemingly not be further apart. However, in today's episode we are going to talk about how NASA uses scuba diving to train astronauts. Astronauts are well known for their intellect, their superior skill and obviously their hard work and dedication to their careers. But one of the lesser known elements of astronaut training is the scuba diving part of it. NASA relies heavily on underwater environments to simulate the conditions of outer space, allowing astronauts to train for complex tasks and isolation in bulky suits very similar to outer space. This program is for now completely self-funded, so if you want to support Scuba Science, you can always go to our website and pick up some Dive Saga merch. This supports the channel and helps me make more episodes of Scuba Science. At the heart of NASA's underwater training program lies the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, or NBL. This is located at Johnson's Space Center in Houston, Texas. The NBL is home to one of the world's largest indoor pools, measuring 202 feet long, 102 feet wide and 40 feet deep. This massive pool holds over 6.2 million gallons of water and is designed to accommodate full-scale spacecraft and even modules of the International Space Station. The pool's primary task is to provide astronauts with a simulation of a weightless environment, where astronauts can practice and prepare for difficult maneuvers in a weightless environment. While water doesn't exactly reproduce the same conditions as microgravity, it comes really close when the astronauts are perfectly weighted for neutral buoyancy. Neutral buoyancy means that a diver neither sinks nor floats to the surface, but is suspended in the water column. So by weighting the astronaut's suits to the state of neutral buoyancy, this comes really close to giving them that sense of being suspended in outer space. Scuba diving does come surprisingly close to simulating microgravity. And in outer space, and for instance in the International Space Station, astronauts will be more or less weightless. This can make specific tasks very difficult. By practicing in the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, or the NBL, astronauts can get used to the specific muscle memory and the specific maneuvers required to complete certain tasks successfully. Not to mention that it also helps with the environmental awareness that comes in very handy when operating in a gravityless environment. The underwater environment presents astronauts with very similar challenges as those that they will encounter during extravehicular activities or EVAs, also known as spacewalks. For instance, limited mobility. Just like in space, Astronauts will be wearing bulky space suits but underwater in the neutral buoyancy lab. Since the suits are airtight, which is necessary for space, they will obviously also be watertight. And so they can be worn in the neutral buoyancy lab to mimic the same set of movements that the astronaut will have when doing a spacewalk. They also practice tool handling. Once again, in those bulky suits and in a microgravity environment, handling certain tools to perform certain tasks can be very challenging. We don't want to find out in outer space that a certain technique for this is required. We want to figure that out in preparation in the neutral buoyancy lab so that the astronauts can be provided with the specific tools and the specific ways of operating those tools that we know will be successful in outer space. Then there is also spatial orientation. In the water, astronauts experience a disorienting environment where there is no clear up or down, just like in outer space. This helps them prepare for the three-dimensional freedom that they will experience as well on their EVAs. Lastly, there is also problem solving. The underwater environment allows NASA to simulate certain problems that could arise on a spacewalk, which requires astronauts to think in terms of problem solving, dealing with possible mechanical failures or delays. 
Before entering the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, NASA requires their astronauts to be scuba diving certified. In fact, this includes an open water and some type of advanced certification with some added modified skills that are necessary to be able to scuba dive in this specific environment. The goal there is obviously to ensure that all candidates are proficient in buoyancy, underwater navigation and rescue abilities. In addition to standard scuba diving skills, astronauts obviously also learn how to use specific underwater communication methods and systems similar to what they may be needing when communicating in outer space with their teammates. The Neutral Buoyancy Lab isn't just populated with astronauts simulating microgravity, it is also populated with safety divers. Whenever an astronaut goes in the Neutral Buoyancy Lab and simulates a mission, they are surrounded by several safety divers who, as the name suggests, obviously need to assure the safety of the people in the water. Safety divers may also play a crucial role in positioning certain mission critical equipment and monitoring the astronauts waiting so that they maintain neutrally buoyant. This actually sounds like a pretty interesting job to me. One of the most critical aspects of NASA's underwater training program focuses on EVAs. As we mentioned earlier, these are extravehicular activities or spacewalks. EVAs are relatively dangerous and very physically and mentally demanding, so it is important that they are trained exactly as they will be executed in outer space. They require precise coordination, endurance and problem-solving skills. In the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, astronauts will practice these routines, for instance, repairing or maintaining their spacecraft, for example, installing solar panels on a module of the International Space Station. Obviously, astronauts don't just get sent into space with the parts and then figure out on the outside of the ISS how to install that. This is a carefully coordinated dance that has been practiced and rehearsed with identical copies of the components that they will need to install or repair. The underwater environment allows the astronauts to rehearse and repeat these practices repeatedly until they are 100% confident that it can be executed without a fault. Beyond purely technical aspects, scuba diving also helps astronauts by preparing them for the isolation and the difficulty and the mental challenge of being in outer space. Spending extended periods underwater in bulky suits, knowing that we're not getting out of there for the next few hours, mentally prepares them for what it will be like when they are working in outer space. This may seem obvious, but it can be very restrictive, claustrophobic and physically demanding to be suited up for hours on end with very limited mobility and limited communication. We wouldn't want an astronaut to realize what their limitations are when they are doing an actual spacewalk in outer space. Additionally, the underwater environment obviously reinforces teamwork and collaboration. It is impossible to perform these tasks alone and astronauts rely heavily on the entire team and the communication to make this successful. As NASA looks towards future missions, including lunar exploration under the Artemis missions and eventually putting people on Mars, it is certain that underwater training will continue to evolve. The Neutral Buoyancy Lab remains an invaluable resource to astronaut training, but new technologies such as virtual reality and robotic simulators are being integrated to complement traditional training methods. Scuba diving will likely remain a cornerstone of astronaut training as it provides unparalleled simulation of outer space right here on Earth at a very reasonable price tag. Scuba diving plays a vital role in NASA's astronaut training program, offering a unique and effective way to simulate the challenges of outer space. Through underwater training in NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Lab and certain open water environments, astronauts gain the skills, confidence and resilience that is required of space explorers. As humanity ventures further into outer space, the lessons learned from scuba diving will continue to shape future space exploration. And that is just one of the interesting facets of scuba science.